Scene Script Have you ever pondered about the nature of your existence? Is it reality or just an illusion? Welcome to the realm of questions that have puzzled thinkers across centuries. A realm where we question the very fabric of our existence, where we ponder if what we perceive is real or merely a figment of our imagination. This is a philosophical conundrum that has intrigued minds from Plato to Einstein. The concept of reality and illusion is not a new one. It dates back to ancient times when philosophers like Descartes doubted their own existence, questioning the nature of reality. They wondered if what we perceive as reality is not just a dream or an illusion. The world we experience, they suggested, could be a mere projection of our minds, a construct shaped by our senses and perceptions. Fast forward to the present day, and the question remains, are we living in a reality, or is this all an illusion? The difference now is that we have a new theory to add to the mix, a hypothesis that takes this philosophical question and gives it a modern technological twist. Enter the simulation hypothesis. It's a theory that suggests that we might be living in a sophisticated computer simulation, a virtual reality of sorts. It's a concept that blurs the line between science fiction and philosophy, between technology and existentialism. But what does this mean? Are we merely characters in a cosmic video game, controlled by entities beyond our comprehension? Or is there more to this hypothesis? The simulation hypothesis is more than just a philosophical thought experiment. It's a theory that has been explored by scientists, philosophers, and technologists alike. It's a concept that challenges our understanding of reality, nudging us to question the nature of existence, the fabric of the universe, and our place within it. So buckle up, dear listeners. We're about to embark on a journey into the world of the simulation hypothesis. A journey that will challenge our perceptions, that will make us question what we know and what we believe. As we delve deeper, you'll discover a theory that might change your perception of reality. So, what exactly is the simulation hypothesis? Imagine for a moment a world where technology has advanced so far that it's possible to create a virtually indistinguishable replica of our universe. This is the crux of the simulation hypothesis, a theory suggesting that the reality we perceive might not be real at all, but a computer-generated simulation. Let's break this down a bit. We already use simulations in various fields today. Video games, for instance, create virtual worlds that players can interact with. Flight simulators help pilots train for real-world scenarios without leaving the ground. Now take that concept several leaps forward. Imagine a simulation so advanced, so detailed, that every particle, every atom, every law of physics is precisely replicated. The simulation hypothesis suggests that if such a high level of technological advancement is possible, it's probable that a civilization somewhere in the cosmos has already achieved it. And if they have, it's likely that they would run simulations of their ancestors' lives to understand their history better. If that's the case, we could very well be living in one of those simulations right now. Think about the movie The Matrix, where humans live in a simulated reality created by machines, or the philosophical thought experiment, Brain in a Vat, where a brain is kept alive and fed false experiences. These are dramatizations, of course, but they convey the core idea of the simulation hypothesis. It's important to note that this is a hypothesis, not a proven fact. It's a possibility, a thought experiment, a what-if scenario. But it's a fascinating one, not least because it challenges our understanding of reality itself. It asks us to question what we take for granted, to probe the nature of our existence. Consider the possibility. You, me, everything around us could be part of a sophisticated computer program. Where did this mind-boggling theory originate? Let's delve into its roots. The idea, although sci-fi in essence, has its origins deeply entrenched in philosophical thoughts. It was first proposed in a philosophical argument by Nick Bostrom, a Swedish philosopher, in 2003. Bostrom suggested that future civilizations might have the technological capabilities to run large-scale computer simulations that could recreate past events or realities, thus giving birth to the simulation hypothesis. However, the concept didn't remain in the realm of philosophy for long. It soon found advocates in the scientific and tech communities. 
Renowned theoretical physicist, the late Stephen Hawking, showed interest in the hypothesis. It also found a prominent supporter in Elon Musk, the tech billionaire who suggested that there's a one in billions chance that we're not living in a simulation. The hypothesis, in essence, proposes that what we perceive as reality might indeed be a sophisticated illusion, a simulation run by a more technologically advanced civilization. It's a concept that challenges our understanding of reality and existence, blurring the lines between the physical and the perceived, the real and the virtual. It's easy to dismiss the simulation hypothesis as a product of overactive imaginations or the plot of a sci-fi movie. But remember, this is a theory that has been pondered, debated and endorsed by some of the most brilliant minds of our time. This theory, as outlandish as it might sound, has been supported by some of the brightest minds in the world. Now, you might be thinking, is there any evidence that supports this hypothesis? Well, Let's dive into the scientific and philosophical evidence that could potentially uphold the simulation hypothesis. First, let's consider the advancements in technology. We've seen exponential growth in our computational powers over the last few decades. Today, we can simulate entire universes in video games, with laws of physics, characters with artificial intelligence, and environments that are incredibly detailed. If this growth continues, it's not outlandish to imagine that future civilizations could simulate realities indistinguishable from our own. Take, for instance, the concept of quantum entanglement. This strange phenomenon, where particles become intertwined and instantaneously affect each other, regardless of distance, could be a form of computational shortcut. Instead of calculating every particle's state individually, a simulation could link particles together reducing the processing power required. Then, there's the argument from the field of cosmology. Some scientists have pointed out oddities in our universe that could be signs of it being a simulation. For example, the cosmic ray energy limit, known as the greisen zatsupin kuzmin or GZAK limit, is eerily similar to what you'd expect from a system that has an underlying lattice structure designed to save on computational resources. Philosophically, we have the argument of Nick Bostrom, a philosopher from Oxford University. He proposed that if a civilization could create a simulation of reality, it would likely create many. Thus, statistically, we're more likely to be in one of the many simulations than the one original reality. On a more speculative note, the simulation hypothesis could also explain the Fermi paradox, which questions why we haven't found any signs of extraterrestrial life despite the vastness of the universe. Perhaps other civilizations are also simulations, or maybe we're the only simulation running. Furthermore, some interpretations of quantum mechanics, like the many worlds interpretation, fit well with the simulation hypothesis. The idea that every possible outcome of an event creates a new universe could be seen as a computational process, creating a new simulation for every possible scenario. Lastly, the simulation hypothesis could potentially explain the nature of consciousness. If reality is a simulation, then consciousness could be a part of the code, a programmed aspect of the simulation. This could provide an answer to the hard problem of consciousness, which questions why and how we have subjective experiences. Of course, it's crucial to note that these pieces of evidence are largely theoretical and highly debated. They do not provide definitive proof that we're living in a simulation, but they do offer intriguing possibilities that align with this hypothesis. While definitive proof is elusive, there are intriguing clues that suggest we might be living in a simulation. So hold on to your seats as we delve into the counter-arguments to this mind-bending hypothesis in the next scene. Naturally, with a theory as radical as this, there are counter-arguments and we would be doing a disservice if we didn't explore them as well. First up, we have the technological impossibility argument. This counter-argument posits that the creation of a simulation as complex and intricate as our universe is simply beyond the realms of technological feasibility. Even with the exponential growth of technology, the sheer computational power required to simulate everything from the tiniest quark to the vast expanses of the universe is mind-boggling. Then there's the ethical objection. If we are indeed living in a simulation, 
it implies that some higher beings are controlling our existence. This raises a litany of ethical questions. Would it be morally acceptable for these beings to create a reality where suffering exists? Furthermore, if we are in a simulation, then it's plausible that our creators have the ability to intervene in our reality. Their lack of intervention in the face of human suffering could be seen as ethically problematic. The lack of empirical evidence counter-argument is also worth considering. For all the philosophical and theoretical debates about the simulation hypothesis, there's a notable absence of hard, empirical evidence to support it. While this absence doesn't necessarily disprove the theory, it certainly doesn't bolster it. Finally, there's the solipsistic trap argument. Solipsism is the philosophical idea that only one's own mind is sure to exist. If we consider the simulation hypothesis from a solipsistic perspective, we could argue that it's an unverifiable hypothesis that leads us into an existential dead end. If we can't trust our senses because they're part of a simulated reality, then we can't verify anything, including the simulation hypothesis itself. So, how valid are these counter-arguments? Well, it depends on how you look at it. The technological impossibility argument, for instance, assumes that the beings capable of creating a simulation would be bound by the same technological constraints as us. But who's to say that's the case? The ethical objection, on the other hand, assumes that the hypothetical beings would share our moral frameworks. However, their ethical standards could be vastly different from ours, or they might not have any at all. The lack of empirical evidence argument is a solid one, but it's worth noting that absence of evidence isn't evidence of absence. And as for the solipsistic trap, well, that's more of a philosophical quandary than a definitive counter-argument. While these counter-arguments provide food for thought, none can conclusively disprove the simulation hypothesis. The debate continues, and perhaps that's the beauty of it. After all, what better way to exercise our potentially simulated minds than by pondering the very nature of our existence? So, what if we are living in a simulation? What would that mean for us? Let's delve deep into the rabbit hole and explore the philosophical, ethical, and existential implications of the simulation hypothesis. Firstly, on a philosophical level, the simulation hypothesis provides a radically different perspective on reality. Instead of viewing the universe as a physical entity, we'd have to conceptualize it as an information process. This shift mirrors the transition from Newtonian physics to quantum mechanics, where the concrete reality of particles gave way to the probabilistic nature of wave functions. From an ethical standpoint, the simulation hypothesis raises challenging questions about morality and responsibility. If our actions are merely the product of programmed algorithms, can we be held morally responsible for them? Or does this challenge the very notion of free will? Just as the advent of psychology and neuroscience have forced us to re-evaluate our notions of responsibility, so too might the simulation hypothesis. However, it's the existential implications of the simulation hypothesis that are perhaps the most profound. If we are living in a simulation, what does this mean for our sense of self, our purpose, our mortality? In a simulated universe, death might not be the end. It could simply mean the end of our current program, with the potential for a reboot in a new simulation. This prospect could profoundly reshape our attitudes towards life and death. Furthermore, if we're part of a simulation, it implies the existence of a simulator, a creator. This doesn't necessarily mean a divine entity in a traditional religious sense. It could be an advanced civilization, or even future humans running ancestor simulations. This could bridge the gap between science and spirituality, offering a new perspective on age-old questions about our origins and purpose. But what if we could break free from the simulation? If we could manipulate the code, could we change our own reality? Could we create our own simulations, thereby becoming creators ourselves? These are just some of the mind-bending implications of the simulation hypothesis. It's a concept that shatters our traditional understanding of reality and forces us to question our deepest assumptions about who we are and why we're here. If we are indeed living in a simulation, it would fundamentally alter our understanding of existence. So, there we have it. The simulation hypothesis. 
a mind-bending theory about our existence, a concept that invites us to see our world, not as an absolute reality, but potentially as an elaborate digital construct. It's an idea that has its roots in philosophical thought, but has been given a new dimension by advancements in technology and computing power. We've explored the evidence that supports this hypothesis, from quantum phenomena to the limits of the observable universe, and also shed light on the counter-arguments that challenge it. We've pondered upon the profound implications of such a hypothesis, both on a personal level and for our understanding of the universe. What if our reality is not the baseline? What if we are living within a simulation created by a more advanced civilization? Whether you believe in it or not, the simulation hypothesis certainly gives us a lot to think about. After all, questioning the nature of our reality is what pushes the boundaries of human knowledge.